Welcome to Triangle BNI. Today's show is brought to you by Oak City Tech. We talk all the time about the digital world and how you need professionals like Drago and his team at Oak City Tech to get to your current clients, your future clients, whether it's an email, whether it's a social media post, you need professionals to help you get your message out. Go to oakcitytech.com, tell them what you're looking for. I know they'll be able to help you. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Manning. Each week on Triangle B&I, we bring you a local small business success story. If you are not familiar with b and it is Business Networking International, the world's largest networking organization. In our little slice of heaven here in the Triangle, Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill, each week about 31 chapters, almost 530 people get together, and our sole purpose is to help each other grow our businesses. Our local small business success story today is Cindy Strasser with New York Life. Cindy is in RD24, the Apex Business Builders. They meet Thursday mornings at 9 a.m., so if you are in the Apex area or you want to meet some cool business professionals in the Apex area, please visit Cindy's chapter. Cindy, good morning. How are you? Morning, Mike. How are you? Doing well. I have to take a quick second. Uh, I was off last week. This is a weekly show. It's my favorite time of the week because I just love these, you know, meeting people, having friends on and learning stuff. But I was gone last week. Our uh, youngest son, two on the, on April 8th, let me say that, was married. We're down in Clearwater, Florida for a wedding. And so we have two boys, and this is our oldest one's married, and now our youngest one is married. So it's a lot of fun. Family gatherings. Uh, it's just fun to see your kids happy. And they yeah. pick the date of April 8th because if you take the number 8 and lay it on its side, it's the sig- symbol for infinity. Oh, that's cool. So their anniversary date is always now for infinity. And I like that from husband standpoints. We'll get to Rick and how good he is in a little bit. Of yeah. wow, can I remember that? That's and really and awesome. we had a lot of fun, but we we're traveling back, and we drove down there, and just family gatherings are the best. We yeah. laugh, you know. Some of them you see every now and then, some you don't see for a while. You got cousins down there. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the of the on on my side of the family, my wife's side of the family. There's a uh, ten cousins, and, right, right. and eight of them were down there. Oh, and so we great. had a lot of fun. The yeah. one thing I learned, I don't know the last time you've been to a resort, but I didn't realize the drink, your drinks can pile up because all you have to do is sign to your room. You don't yeah. have to pull out your credit card. You don't have to oh, do any of that. Me. Yeah, they yeah. hand you the sheet of paper to sign room sometimes. 2302, whatever it is. Like, <laughs> hey, and then you look at the bill, 21 drinks. Who else were yeah. we buying for? So. Like uh, they're free until you have to get. Hey, they're free to, yeah, to you check out. They're free, which is great. They <laughs> taste so much better that way. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, I missed everybody last Monday. I'm very glad to be back. I thoroughly enjoy this time, and Cindy, glad to have you here. Oh, thank you. For uh, so, let's talk about some of the things you do. New York Life Insurance. Um, there are many, many levels of what you do. Uh, first of all, we were laughing before we came on here about we know nothing of insurance. We know we know we have it. We don't always know what we have. But right. usually we can answer yes or no. Do you have auto coverage, home coverage, life insurance, you know, things like that. Uh, right. But we really have no idea. What I like about, and you and I have known each other for a little bit, and we've had some good conversations about this. What I like about what you do is – we think life insurance, oh, that fits into this box right here and only this box, and nothing could be further from the truth. So true. Oh what you do can, there's numerous ways you can help people, right. and peace right. of mind is is what I love about it, but it's not the traditional life insurance anymore, is it? No, it's not, and you know, so many people are changing jobs now and are realizing that, you know okay, well, I had life insurance with my company and now I don't. And wow, I'm this age and it's, it can be, you know, a bit more expensive, obviously, than what they were paying for um, with their employer, if they even paid for it. Um, But that's why you should always have your own, own coverage. Yeah. And when, let's just say you and I were about 30 minutes older than everybody else. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. right. Right. So back in our day, we got everything from our employer. 
We there never we had go. to ask. There was no reason to go into the marketplace. None of that. And never. now, sometimes you may get it from your employer, but now sometimes you can find it cheaper elsewhere, and that's where somebody like you comes in. Right, right. And, you know, I'm, what I do is sit down and really go over everything that they have. Um, you know, if it's husband and wife, everything that both of them have to make sure that, you know, we fill in any gaps that are there. It's great to have coverage at work if they offer it. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's it's that gap coverage that I really want to make sure that we that I review with people. And, you know, if you have a mortgage, you want to make sure that's covered for a certain amount of time until it's paid off. Um, you know, there's just lots of ways to do it and everybody's unique. So there's not a one size fits all when it comes to life insurance. And I think a couple of things you mentioned here, uh, gaps, first of all, and we'll get to that second because I wrote it down so I can remember it now because, you know, I'm a good host, so I have to write it down okay. now. Otherwise, I get off on my own tangents, right? Right. I have, I until I got into B&I, and I don't know if that says more about me or more about how good B&I is. I had no idea you could get insurance on your mortgage to make sure you cover if you bought a house. A lot of these things I had no idea about. Do right. When you have conversations with people, are they aware that, oh, I didn't even know that was available? Well, I think sometimes when I ask people a question, you know, do you have term? Do you have whole life? Well, first of all, people will say, Either yes, and maybe they don't know, or they say, I don't know. Um, and, you know, it's the difference between renting insurance and buying a home, really. Um, it's kind of the way that I explain it. And, you know, there's some insurance that you don't, you know, you need something to cover your mortgage, but you don't need that forever. And while you have kids at home and you want to make sure they're covered for college, again, you don't need that forever. So that's where... Um, temporary or term insurance comes in. Or you could, you can cover them for college. Walk me through well, that. Well, I mean, you want to cover yourself, right? You know, it's like putting that, yeah. putting the mask on when, on the airplane. Before yeah. You're when do you start that? Um, I, I am a huge proponent of that, you know, about six or seven days after the baby comes. <laughs> Then you talk to your life insurance agent. I, rec I recently had a grandmother call me to, uh, she had another grandson and she wanted to put life insurance on him right away. So, and that's a great way to save money for, for college because okay. you don't, um, where is a 529 plan? Um, all of that money in that bucket is um, looked at when you go and apply for grants and loans, um, money from cash money from cash value life insurance is not really included in that. Yeah. All right. So hang on a sec. So if I have a kid born three weeks ago, or let's say 10 years ago, and three days mm -hmm. after they're born, I started that 529. And let's just pick a number. Let's just say there's $10,000 in that account. Right. And the kid's 10 years old. Right. That factors in to it a does. credit report and everything? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Whereas the cash value life insurance is not included, not at this time. So. I did not know that. Yeah. So it's a great way, you know, and, and that cash value can either be used for college or it can be gifted for a wedding or gifted for whatever. They can just keep it, let it grow until they need it and want to spend it however they want. Yeah. I always, of course, find any way to bring in my grandson, Oliver, oh, yeah. uh, who we got to see. And by the way, on oh, yeah. or about August 16th, we'll be grandparents again, and it will be a granddaughter. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, so my friends and I have had a good chuckle about me uh, because uh -huh. we have two boys and I have a grandson. I have four nieces. I have six nieces, but, you know, wasn't really around them a whole lot. I visit right, them, but right. wasn't around them growing up because none of us lived around each other. But I, I told, they're like, oh, she's going to have you wrapped around your finger. I'm like, she can paint my fingernails whatever color she wants. I'll go to a board meeting. I don't care. I want to tell people I have a granddaughter. She is so cool exactly. to do stuff with. I don't care yeah. what it looks like. I'm wearing it out. So, right, right. Uh, so let's talk grandparents here because we're always, most grandparents want to do stuff for their yeah. grandkids. Yes. What type of things would you recommend for us to look into? Um, definitely buying them a policy and they can actually, um, either, you know, 
we can set it up to where they can pay it over five years. Um, they can do a one-time payment. We can put it into um, a deposit account that actually earns interest if they want it to pay for, you know, want to pay for it over the years. Um, but there's tax implications and and putting it all in at the same time. Um, but definitely gifting. My mom did that a couple of years ago because my nieces literally have everything that you can imagine. So it's very <laughs> hard to buy for them. So um I was like, mom, why don't you just get them a life insurance policy? Mm -hmm. So she did. So she'll pay for that. And then um, I'll probably take it over and then my sister will take it over. Um, and I did the same thing for my sister when, when we were growing up mm -hmm. because she's 15 years younger than me. Yep. So. Uh, and, our, and I do want to get into that story as well. But going back to kids having everything, uh, my yeah. brother, uh, my brother and I are a year and a half apart, but he got, he married later in life. Right. And so my kids are 35 and 31 and his kids are 19 and 16. Oh, wow. And yeah. when they were little, the, his kids had all four grandparents near, they were all four in Raleigh. And so they're getting gifts mm -hmm. all the time. And he finally just started telling everybody else, here's the 529 plan. Just put money in there. They got no Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's true because, yeah. you know, I mean, that's a gift that, you know, when you give something like that, Yep. For life insurance, I mean that's that's a gift for life. Oh yeah, yeah, and it'll it'll come in way more handy than right. I mean Tonka trunk talk Tonka trucks are the standard for little boys. I don't know what for little right, girls are, right. but for boys, but even oh, a policy yeah. would be better than a Tonka truck in yeah. you know fifteen eighteen yeah. years. So, but exactly. you're right. It's things like that that I don't I don't believe anybody ever you know explained that to me when we became parents. And right, so that's right. one of the neat things I like about being eyes. I get to meet people like you who can, right. you know, just in an average conversation, whether I become a client or anybody else becomes a client, it's like, Hey, you know, tell me more. Here's yeah. some things to think about. And you just, you get smarter exactly. that way. Uh, the other thing you mentioned a couple of times is gaps. And you talk about, is that usually when people are changing jobs? That's what we've seen a lot of now, or they're retiring. You know, a lot of people are retiring early and um, I have some friends that are, are doing that very soon. And, you know, they've worked for a great company. They have a pension. They have all the, the stuff that we had back in the day. But um, the one thing they won't have when they retire is life insurance. So, um, you know, you don't really think about that until you need it. And then when you're in your 60s, not cheap. So, but now I'm learning um, that too. <laughs> yeah. I wish I just wish I could go back and know now or what I, you know, yes. know now, you know, what, I'm what I didn't know then. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Isn't that Thank the you. Toby Keith song? Wish I knew now what I did. Didn't yeah, know now what I didn't right. know then, but that's for a different reason. But we'll, yeah, we'll get to that later. Right. Right. But you're right though. We don't, I think people are more aware today than, you know, 40, you know, I started work. My first job out of college was 39 years you're almost 40 years ago and that never came up. We were oh, bulletproof, no. everything. Of course, everything was two bucks back then. So you didn't think much of, of anything because yeah. it didn't cost much, but stuff, conversations like that never came up, which is one of the reasons why I enjoy this show is we get to share um, tips like this for right. folks. Just again, just to think about, or even just like you said earlier, call your insurance agent, see what you have. Yeah, see and, what you have, right. And the other thing I've learned, and, and thankfully we've not been, Becky and I haven't been burned by this yet, but I know some people have, is they have coverage, but it's the wrong coverage or the incomplete right. coverage. Right, and right. Yeah, they, I bought a policy when I was 24 or 25, and I had no idea what I, I mean, yeah. you know, after going through all of the training and getting my license, I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Why did I buy that? But I, I had no idea what it was. No, uh, you know? it wasn't talked about back then. No, it, the stuff, no. yeah, life, death, or insurance, death, and taxes just weren't brought up right. at the kitchen table <laughs> usually. And now I right. hope they are in many houses, at least just so everybody's prepared. And that's right. the thing, because if you really, truly want to take care of your loved ones, this is how you yeah. do it. So yeah. when you're gone, they don't have to worry about X, Y, and Z because it's already it's already you know covered and, and exactly. taken care of. So. Yeah. One one of the other things I learned about life insurance, how it factors into owning a small business. 
Oh, yes. Uh, time, talk mo- if you talk more about partner. that. Yeah, talk more about yeah. that for us. Um, you know, it's really important, even if you have some sort of contract with your business partner, to make sure that, um, you know, your buy-sell agreement is in place. And normally that includes a term life policy on each other. Um, so that if something happens to your business partner, you don't have to um, worry about dealing with their family. So your family would use that life insurance money to, um, or you would use that life insurance money to buy the business yeah. from their family as part of the agreement. Yeah, because yeah. the last thing spouses probably want to do is inherit a company that their spouse was doing and they have right. zero they interest. Have no- so it's two questions they need to answer. One is, do you want to own a business? And then do you right. want to own a business in this industry? And I think right. most chances, both answers are no. Right, right. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, I, I know of a business owner that's a friend of mine that um, says, oh, yeah, I mean, you know, we've talked about it. We have an agreement, but they don't have an agreement on paper. Mm-hmm. They don't have life insurance on each other. It's so it's it's. Yeah, and one of the partners can bring that up all they want, but oh, yeah. if it's not written anywhere, right? There yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, there yeah. and that just answers it could be a bad situation. It just it is a friend of mine's mom died a few months back, and there was no paperwork to set up power of attorney or anything like that, and it took a good couple of months just to run that through the system so my friend could take care of everything. Oh yeah, and oh, then yeah. then we go on having. You know, so my, you know, Becky and I and our brothers and sisters were all, you know, 58 and up. So we've got right, right. aging parents left, the ones that do. Um, just even uh, like, look, one of the kids is on the parent's bank account. Again, transitions right. like that, that, that make, you know, you can help just little things like that with the life insurance, you know, everything written down on paper. So that's what I like yeah. about what you do is because there's way more. <laughs> It's involved oh, in yeah. just, just the mean, three words, New York life. There's way more involved in this. There's two things that you can do for your family. One is have life insurance, and number two is have an estate plan. Those are the ah. two most important things you can do with your fam- for your family. Because, okay. you know, my mom and I have had this discussion. However, I've not gotten her to an attorney yet. Um, and unfortunately, she lives in Virginia because I know great, some great state attorneys in North Carolina. Um, but... You know, when that time comes, I just want to be able to grieve and not deal with a bunch of paperwork. You know, I don't want to deal with yeah. figuring things out and putting a puzzle together and all that. Yeah, and especially if you're a child of a parent that dies and you just, you're not wired to, you know, deal no. with all the banks and the creditors and filing no. the paperwork with the, you know, the state and. You know, I didn't right. know till we lost our dad in 2013 and my brother, thankfully, was the executor for both mom and dad. And he right. was the right one that, you know, should have been. Right. I didn't know you had to put it a, a notice in the newspaper that so-and-so has died so all the creditors can find that and come get money oh, if, they, yeah. if they're if they owed it. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. But he knew because he studied that way. And, uh, right, but, right. Uh, yeah. So tell tell me how you got into, I know the story, but share with us how you got into the insurance world. Because you've not been in that long, but you um, have connections to, wow, this really helps. Yeah, so um, let's see, where do I start? Um, so growing up, um, my sister Andrea was born um, severely brain damaged. It was back when the they used to knock the mom completely out. Um, So she did not, you know, she couldn't do anything for herself. She couldn't bathe herself. She couldn't dress herself. She couldn't feed herself, all of that. Um, She was non-ambulatory. So um, anyway, uh, when she was 16, I was 19. um, She passed away suddenly, um, unexpectedly. And I just remember sitting in the funeral home thinking, gosh, my parents do not have the money for this funeral. And that just really bothered me. So going forward, um, my sister was three at the time when my sister Andrea died. Um, but so when I was like 24, I bought policies on myself and on her, um, you know, just to have that coverage, just in case. I mean, and that's not the number. 
not the only reason to buy life insurance is is for that part because there's some living benefits to the life insurance policies. Um, both my sister and I have taken advantage of those living benefits. Um, but it really just stuck with me. Um, and the other part is being in the service industry pretty much my whole life. Um, customer service wise is what um, kind of brought me to this point. I was selling beer and wine in the Outer Banks. My husband and I moved here in 2017 and I transferred and did that. And then um, I loved it. I loved all of my clients were great. I just kind of felt like there was a calling to do something that mattered a little bit more than, you know, a nice bottle of wine is great. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but, you know, there's something more, there's something more important that I could do to help people. Yeah. And that makes getting up in the morning better. And it does. When, I'm yeah. sure the look, because I know the aha moment I have when I'm working with a client just to help their business. And all of a sudden right. they're like, oh, I didn't think about that. I, sh you know, but right. when you get people to put stuff on paper and enroll in a program or whatever it is that's going to help them or their family must be huge yeah. satisfaction knowing that. Yeah, it is. It really is. Just to know that, you know, and obviously I've worked with a lot of people that, that are close to me to make sure that they're covered because I feel like I at least have to say that even if somebody doesn't want to talk to me about it, I at least have to say it to give myself peace of mind to know that, you know, they know they can come to me to talk about whatever questions they have. Um, and, and I really, it's really important to me that people are educated on what's out there, what their options are, whether they buy it from me or not. I just, it's so important for people to sit down and have that conversation um, because the last thing I want to see from anybody I know is a GoFundMe page yeah. for somebody's funeral or to help with their kids' education. And if you buy a lot of these things at the right time in your life, it's not real expensive. Right. It's not. You know, if it's you're not. 25 today in good health, right, right, you're rolling into something pretty cheap and, and easy, but right. you have full exactly. coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even if you, you know, <laughs> even if you start with a simple term policy, that's at least starting. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, I always enjoy the research I do on guests coming on the show because I learn little things that I didn't know, especially if I know them and I learned something like, oh, I can't right. wait to ask this. So, uh, right. so you had mentioned uh, Tryon Distributing. Uh, uh -huh. We're going to get to a Thousand Oaks Barrel Company, but right. I found out, Cindy, you were a bartender. Oh, I was. Oh, yeah. uh, tell me All how that time. came about. <laughs> so I always want to know, Let's did you see. enjoy it? And how much BS did stories did you get from people telling you about oh, their gosh. day or their week? And you're like, dude, you're lying through yeah. your teeth. I know that's not right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, so I've been a bartender a couple of times. Um, the longest time, I think, was at the beach when I first moved to the beach. Mm. When I moved to the Outer Banks from, uh, from Richmond when Circuit City laid me off back in 2001. Um, I was like, gosh. You know, I had all these friends trying to get me a job at Capital One or, um, you know, any other business in Richmond. And I was like, oh, I think I'm going to go to the beach for like maybe the summer. And then um, I was there for 17 years. So. <laughs> yeah. But when I moved to the beach, I had full severance days, which was great. It was like, you know, retirement almost. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have been a little smarter about that. <laughs> I had a great summer. Um, but yeah, I bartended there in a couple of places at the beach and, um, yeah, it was fun. I always like, you know, just the stories and the yeah. people that you meet are priceless. So. Yeah. The, it's some people, and I would imagine on more days than not, you truly are an ear for somebody just, oh yeah, because sometimes oh, yeah. it's you, every now and then, now and then you'll hear the phrase, sometimes it's easier to talk to a stranger. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes you just want to get off your chest, right? Right. And right. I'm, I'm sure some people you really felt bad for, and then right. others were just like, dude, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, I didn't have an, you know, at the beach, people were pretty happy because they were on vacation. Yep. You know, we did have, you know, yep. locals come in that, that you already knew anyway. So. Did, did you make good money? Yeah, I did. I did. And. Um, do bartenders get paid like servers do at like two eighteen an hour or whatever yes, it is? They do. And so yeah. you're working on tips. Right. 
All right. Yeah. So what was the bet? What's a trick for a, an up and coming bartender to make sure they get a decent tip? Decent tip. I don't know. It's always remembering their name, which ah, is okay. same in business, any business, All right. um, you know, kind of catching, you know, somebody's child's name or being able to relate it back. I mean, it all, it's all about sales really. Yep. Just everything about sales. Yeah, because if you, if I come sit down at the bar and I, however my name comes up and, you know, I'm there, say Amnon and I are there and we're talking and you keep checking in right. and then you come back like 35 minutes later and go, all right, Mike, Amnon, you guys good? I would be like, wow. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, you like, know, it's about building the relationship. Yeah. Here's a, here's yeah, another 12% we'll come- on the tip. Good job. Right. Uh, so who, if, do you have enough data to answer the question, who tips better men or women? Um, it's usually, well, it's usually men. I hate to say it. Yeah. Cause we would dread like a whole group of women coming in. Like, <laughs> oh, that's it. Although I feel like that's changed a little okay. bit. All right. You know, do, could you ever tell if, if they were moms, if moms tip better than single women or dads tip better than single guys? Yes. I would say moms tip better than single women and I don't know, it depends, single guy. Yeah. Yeah. Could you tell if a client, if somebody drinking at your bar either was or had been in the hospitality industry? Oh yeah. 100%. And so they knew that. Yep. Oh yeah. My husband has been in the hospitality industry his whole life. So, um, when he and I first met, they used to tip each other like a hundred dollars back wow. and forth. I mean, they would basically pass the same hundred dollars back and forth. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my God, you're going to tip that much!" But then it would come back. So, oh, that's... I remember my mom being in. Um, my mom was my husband was bartending up in Duck, and my mom was visiting, and she was with some friends, and there were some ladies flirting with my husband. And I was like, no, that's fine, mom. That means they're going to tip it. <laughs> uh, by the way. Does that bother you? I said, no. No. Uh, uh, no. If it, yeah, I was like, what's in it for me? Oh, it, more money? It. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, by the way, Duck, if people have never been to Duck or to the, the coast there, uh, Corolla, right? All those little towns right around there. Corolla. Corolla, sorry. Uh, Duck Donuts. Oh, oh man, yeah. they're the best. Right there. mm-hmm. uh, they're bacon glazed donut. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a keeper right there. So when we yeah, order a mixed dozen, we always get two bacon donuts and cut them oh, in, yeah. in four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because hospitality people, you're right, they take care of each other. They do. They do. Uh, yeah. Now there will be some people watching and listening today that have never heard of Circuit City. I hate to break it to you, Cindy. I know. <laughs> Isn't that sad? But in its oh. day, it was the player, wasn't it, for electronics? It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah, I started working there. Well, I'm not going to say what year, but early. Yeah. Um. You know, before Best Buy was around. Yeah. And um, yeah. And yeah, well, it was a lot of fun. I still have relationships. I, I talked to most of the people that I worked with originally. Um. It's it was a big family and a lot of fun and. Yeah. Learned a and lot. when they went under, of course, yeah, when they went under, that yeah. was a big deal. But yeah, in its day, I mean, that's where everybody went. You just, oh, yeah. It was and almost I mean, their, their training was second to none. I mean, oh, really? we did not, every single salesperson went through, I think, two or three weeks of training in the store. And then every single salesperson went to Richmond for a week for training. And if they didn't pass, <laughs> they were sent home early. When did you guys get wind of, oh, this thing may go away? I remember I was in corporate operations when they made the decision to pull major appliances out in October, Uh, September or October. And I was like, what? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That was, there were some decisions being made along the way that you were like, you know, CarMax was a great decision because CarMax was spun off from Circuit City. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and you know, back in the day when Circuit City was growing, I used to travel all over the country and train new people after I worked in the store. Um, I worked in the training department. So um, I would be out for two weeks at a time 
anywhere in the country and then, you know, train them on security and um, operations, um, the, the, their point of sale system, which was in-house created, um, which was, I mean, amazing for the time that it was. Um, but yeah. Why did they decide then, to, to pull appliances? sell music to sell cds and uh, stuff but that was just essentially just taking here here lowe's yeah, yeah. <laughs> here here yeah. Home depot here sears wow um and so that's what started it yeah and believe. then they were you know i went on a trip with um with someone one time and we shopped best buy and that was before best buy came to the east coast so we went to minneapolis and you know secret shopped um, and that was when they were really worried about Best Buy and wanted to, you know, kind of emulate thinking they were saying, you know, wanted to be ahead of the game when in fact, I feel like if they would have stayed the course wow. and kept educated salespeople that, you know, because then they just went to, they didn't sell, they didn't offer commission anymore. Okay. They were hourly. A lot of people were let go. I mean, I, Back in the early 90s, I knew people that made $100,000 a year selling TVs wow. and VCRs. You know, you could make a lot of money. So, What was the connection with CarMax? Um, Richard Sharp, who was the CEO of Circuit City, and um, Austin Ligon together formed CarMax. So wow. it was under the Circuit City umbrella, and then they spun it off separate. Hmm. I yeah. had no idea. Yeah, so we used to have we had shares of Carmax stock that were okay. You know, in the end, that was worth more than <laughs> <laughs> worth more than my Circuit City stock. But but the good news was your severance got you through a summer at the beach. It did. If I've That's learned right. anything the today, it's the story. The, <laughs> <laughs> and you wish you'd had about twenty percent of that in a bank account right now, right? Yes, right now that would be great. Uh, yeah. In your day with Tryon Distributing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I read, uh, as your bio said, you had over on or about 120 accounts or so with 95% yeah. customer loyalty. Yeah. How'd you do that? Same way I talked to my bar customers, you know, um, and it really working in the outer banks, my territory was Ocracoke Island <laughs> to duck. So okay. I had, you know, small business owners who, if you've been to Hatteras Island, um, you know, or if you watch the Weather Channel, you know that that they're cut off a lot of times when there's a storm. So people that live there have a really hard, I mean, it's hard to make a living there. So really being invested in helping them, you know, it was, it was kind of a partnership. That's the way I looked at it. You know, if I sell something that's going to sell great for them, then, you know, it's a win-win situation. So... Yeah. And, and I really being there for my customers 24 seven. I mean, they knew they could call me. I would drive, you know, back then our warehouse was in Charlotte. So I would have to drive to like little Washington to meet a driver. <laughs> that would be like a five hour, just a five hour trip to go meet and get something for the weekend. But if I didn't go get it, yeah. they wouldn't have it. So, yeah. you know, we moved to, that relationship. yeah, we moved to Daytona beach in 99. And we lived there for 10 years and I'd never been around a hurricane, never, oh, never yeah. lived anywhere, yeah. or, you know, and cause for some reason, another, when I grew up here in Raleigh, there were no hurricanes that came this way. Right. I may right. not have remembered them, but I don't remember any coming this way. Right. And I learned the priorities when you see a hurricane that could, you know, head, head our way was the dog store, the liquor store, and then the grocery store. Because if people had a pet, that pet was going to be taken care of. Their house oh, yeah. may be floating down the road, but their dog was going to be, there's going to be dog food and they had everything they need. Exactly. And then the exactly. liquor store was more crowded than the grocery store. Oh, yeah. And, oh you, yeah. and you get to the grocery store and the bread aisle's empty, the uh, bottled water aisle is empty, and for some reason or other, the store we shopped at, the Cheese Whiz aisle was empty, but which was good because <laughs> I didn't eat Cheese Whiz, so I don't feel like I was missing out on anything, but. Right, but right. but you're right though the prep work uh, on those islands yeah. uh, is crucial. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember. I can't remember what year it was. It was Hurricane Arthur. Um, didn't affect any other part but Ocracoke, 
and they evacuated Ocracoke and it was July. It was Ooh. right before 4th of July. Ooh. So all of my accounts had already gotten their 4th of July delivery and they really didn't order anything else. They didn't need anything else after that. Yeah. yeah. Like they normally would, you know, normally they would have sold out that week and then, but yeah. I hope and that's it, when I said, I think it's time to move. Yeah. <laughs> I hope at quarterly bonus time, your bosses didn't hold that against you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was tough. Were yeah. you able to uh, sample new products when you were working for them? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> I mean, it was my job. I had Naturally. to do it. <laughs> Naturally. You had to. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's funny. Uh, so one of the places you worked at, and I didn't know much of it, um, one thousand thousand oaks barrel company in virginia yeah yeah all right so, so a- l- let me see if i've got this straight because i was on the website yesterday and so you age you can age your own stuff your own spirits and i saw you could age you had aging barrels for pickle peppers spirits oh yeah so yeah. i would go buy a barrel and make my own stuff in my garage yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's a friend of mine um, that I have known since junior high. It's her husband's company. Um, and he's been in business for over what, about probably close to 25 years now. Um, but yeah, you, you can buy those little barrels. You can do your own. They make great gifts for weddings, for like, you know, for groomsmen oh. um, or bridesmaids. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can just you know, put something in there, age it. There's instructions. They also have this cool little thing. If you're a fan of anything smoked, it's called the fog hat. Mm -hmm. And they, um, you know, you put some, it's a newer product that they came out after (laughs) I left, but, um, but you, you know, smoke it, it comes, you can put it on, on top of your drink and then smoke your own. And then they have that for foods. If you want to smoke some cheeses or whatever. Wow. Yeah. Are they still in business? They are. Yeah. All right, I may have oh, checked yeah. that out. Well, obviously I was on the yeah. website yesterday. That's a stupid question. Yeah. I'd need to check that out. Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah. I like that. Now you are from Richmond. I am from Roanoke, Virginia. Roanoke, Star City okay. of the South. Uh, very good. The Tidewater area, correct? No. No. Blue Ridge Mountains. Hell's on the water then. Yeah. What uh, about- Richmond. No. And then- Anyways, I'm my geography's bad. I'm still on vacation time, so I've been yeah, back so- a week. I was doing some stuff this morning. There's three things I forgot to do last week, and I was here all week working. Totally forgot about doing it. I'm still on vacation time. Yeah. So, do you know where Virginia Tech is? Yeah, Blacksburg. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. So not far from. Why do I want Blacksburg. to put that on the water? Oh well. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, uh, so your husband Rick. I always like asking people on the show this question. Uh, how did you two meet, and do you both tell the story the same way? Um, no, we do not. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, let's see. I had gotten laid off from my job at Circuit City, and I went to the beach by myself. I think it was in April of 2021, and I got a hotel room, an oceanfront hotel room, and just hung out for like three or four days, and... I went to Goon Bays, which is um, on the beach road in Kill Devil Hills, and met a bunch of people. It was, you know, still the off season. So um, anyway, they used to have bands on Wednesday night. So I would go there, hang out, um, met him. And then what happened then? Then I just started to maybe stalk. A little bit. All right. <laughs> I was bartending in Richmond after being laid off. And then I would, on Wednesdays, I would just go to Kill Double Hills for band night and hang out. And then eventually, you know, I met a lot of people and decided that's that's where I wanted to go for a while. Didn't move there for him. I moved there just because <laughs> I wanted to live at the beach. Yep. Check that off my bucket list. So, but yeah. And where was happened. the where was the first date? Um, what was the first date? Probably Quagmire's, which was the oceanfront, um, oceanfront bar on the beach that's right. no longer there, unfortunately. And when did you start getting the sense of, hmm, there might be something here? 
Um, it was a while. <laughs> I mean, we hung out. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot in common. And um, I remember one day he played a Lyle Lovett song. And I, then I was like, oh, brother, <laughs> now this is serious. <laughs> so Lyle like, oh Lovett. Gosh. And he loves Lyle Lovett. Okay. Like, what could be better than that? Nice. Uh, what does does he? What instrument does he play in the band? Or is he, he a, does not. He's a singer. You know what? No. Oh, Lyle Lovett. No, no, no. Rick, you said he played a Lyle Lovett song. Oh yeah, like played it like on a CD. Oh okay, gotcha. All right, all right. Oh okay. yes, yes. No, oh, that was good. Are you so, familiar with Lyle? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So that music's good, snuggling up to each other music. Oh, okay. that's great. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, that was our first stamp. Then. How would he tell the story different, you think? Um, well, he would say that I stalked for sure. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. Hey, it, it worked out good for him, didn't it? It did. <laughs> All that really mattered. It did. I would just happen to be wherever he was because I was really good. At, I have good listening skills. <laughs> good. <laughs> See, again, that comes into play with sales. That customer right. service. Right. He, right, did, he exactly. didn't know that you were yeah. working and with your skill right. set, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. I'd ever heard him say he was going somewhere for work one day. And I, I have a friend whose mom had a beach house. And um, so they were out of town and I didn't really have anywhere to stay. I wasn't planning on staying. So I went over to their place and, you know, got ready. Yep. And yep. All that. There were, you can tell real love when you, somebody, Tell, uses a phrase I wasn't planning on staying, but once I found out he was staying, I was staying. It's like when Becky and I met. Finally, we'd run with the same group for a year, and we were at this restaurant uh -huh. in Austin, Texas. And it was a Sunday night. I was working at the University of Texas, and we were hosting the NCAA Track and Field Championships. Okay. So I was this was like five thirty on a Sunday. I was ready to go home, and that's when I saw her, walked up to her, and said hi. And she said, "Oh, are you going over to Lynn's house?" And I said, are you going? She goes, yeah. And I said, oh, yeah, me too. Had no oh, plans to go until go. I found out she was going. Go. So That's right. That is what love will do to you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, before we came on the show, you were talking about your nieces. Oh, yeah. And you were over there yesterday. We are laughing, sharing uh, Easter candy and sugar rush stories. How, oh, yeah. how old are your nieces? So Emma just turned seven, okay. and Willa will be five next month. Now, did their sugar rush turn into a meltdown or just they sat and got Oh, quiet? I'm sure it did, yeah. but I left way before it was yeah. going to happen. Yeah. We, and I was very careful. I bought them um, the exact same thing mm -hmm. so that they wouldn't fight over it. But then one, you know, they were playing together and one wanted the story to go this way and one wanted the story to go that way. <laughs> and then they were screaming at each other. So it was fun. When we were at the uh, resort, in Clearwater for Cameron's uh -huh. wedding, Oliver, our grandson, was there, and uh, so my son decided his dad, our oldest son, decided to get him a basically a, a it wasn't a virgin daiquiri, it was like some strawberry drink or something like right, that, but right, it had right. sugar in it, right? And right. so Oliver drank the drink, and when some friends stopped by from Daytona, and he was just entertaining them for like twenty five minutes, oh, and yeah. then instantly oh, yeah. here comes a crash, and he just started he was laid on the chair there. It just started crying. He was tired. <laughs> I oh, did yeah. feel bad for it, but we laughed so hard. It's like, uh, wow, that happened quick. Because he yeah. doesn't get a lot of sugar. Right, uh, but right. So when he does, and now they right. know, we're laughing about that about you know 10 hours later. It's like, okay, note to self. <laughs> Not, oh, yeah. Nothing oh, in yeah, a tall glass sure. like this. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, the other thing I like about being in BNI is is to meet folks like you and others that have been on the show is the tie to the community, just to sh to talk to because I always like showing people the type of people in BNI. I mean, good right, folks, right. Uh, hard workers, but you are a volunteer with the North Carolina Regional Advisory Council. Yes, and comfort zone. Yeah, that helps grieving kids. Yes. So, um, what is it? One in thirteen kids lose a parent or sibling. Wow. Um, so comfort zone camp is a camp for kids um, who have lost either a parent, sibling, or um, a guardian, someone close to them. Um, so it's camp is free for the kids. They get to go and meet other kids who are dealing with 
the exact same thing they are, you know, with grief. Um, and learning that you can play and have fun and still be grieving. Um, it's just a great program. So we are actually getting ready to start our um, annual 5K Your Way. So I'll be posting lots of things about that to, for people to either um, donate to participate or, you know, join their, create their own teams and participate however they like. Very but, cool. Yeah. So Thank one you. in 13 kids, is that by a certain age that they have lost a loved one? Um, that I'm not so by a certain age. It's usually by the time they're 18. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, so I was just recently on a girl's trip and a friend of mine is a teacher in West Virginia. And she told me that over 50% of the kids in her school, not in her class, but in her school, have either lost a parent, their parent is in jail, or their parent, they've been taken away from their parent because mm. of opioids. Wow. Wow. So, uh, yeah. you know, there's definitely a tie to that, and there's a tie to COVID, and then, yeah. you know, all the other things that happen. Where can people get some information on this? these events? Um, it's comfortzonecamp.org. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, Very but it's cool. a great organization, and we're Always looking for businesses to sponsor. Um, if anybody's interested, we would. I would love to talk to them. Good, yeah, and that's again, that's one of my favorite things about being I is meeting people yeah. like you that are tied to the community. All right, real quick before we wrap it up, uh, we educated at the beginning of the show. So one, what's one thing somebody can do today to make sure they've got whatever they've got if they've got it and what it looks like? What can they do? They can either call me or they can call their agent to do a review, um, to make sure that they, you know, what I call a gap review. I mean, I sit down with people and I'll tell you if there's something you have that you don't need, or if there's a gap there that we can fill. Um, but just really making sure and having the conversation with your family and really work on an estate plan. It's not something you want to think about or do, but it makes it so much easier when something does happen. And whether you have a life insurance agent or an auto and home agent, you should expect, as the consumer, we should expect an annual review of our policy. Yes. yes. And if people aren't getting I, that, they need to ask yeah, questions why. They do. Because so many people, I mean, the first thing I look at when I get what we call orphan clients that don't have an agent is, you know, people are like, no, I don't want you to sell me anything. And that's not what I'm trying to do. I'll certainly look for any gaps or any changes in your life, you know, but the main thing is to make sure your beneficiaries are up to date. Yeah. Yep. Just those little that can things. Cause yep. Big problems. Yeah. And the last thing anybody wants to do is put their life and their money in the hands of the state yeah. they live in. Right. Not knocking states, forever. but you don't want somebody you don't no. know making decisions about you and your life and your money. No. So no. call. we've been putting Cindy's number up here on the screen throughout the show. Please give her a call if you don't have somebody. If you have an agent, call them. Right. Call them and just make sure your stuff's up to date. That's all. Right. That's right. the first thing. So uh, anyway, Cindy, it's been a blast. Uh, always enjoy Thank our you, conversations. Uh, the I like this, the uh, passing... See, I always make a note. I keep a, a Excel sheet about shows, you know, number of the show, who was on it, the date. And I always put a little note for me to remember. And this one is passing the $100 bill between each other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is so good. I like that because I've never been in that world, so I like things like that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Cindy's BNI chapter meets Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. in Apex. If you're in that area, go visit them. Uh, Cindy, best of luck in 2022. And I know you and I will be seeing each other at networking events. Yes. Thank you, Mike. And we will see everybody next time on Triangle BNI. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel 
Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.